I love the debate of what's best, lures or bait. I think the argument's been going around in circles forever and probably will continue to do so. For me, I don't know if there'll ever be a resolution, but I do love the opportunity when you get the chance to test the two approaches face to face. fishing today with South Australian fishing guru Tom Tierney aka Tumby Tom and he's brought me to one of his sneaky brim spots where he reckons some of the biggest brim he's ever caught live. He's brought along the bait approaches today and I've brought along a finesse approach I'm going to throw around a few lures but I'm really keen to do though to see how Tommy goes about catching his fish because what you can learn from the bait guys very much applies to how you fish your lures. When Tom rang me before hitting the plane and heading down south he told me he was going to take me to one of these sneaky little brim spots of his and the way he described it was small waterway, big and cautious fish he said. He predominantly chases them on baits. He's taken a lot of people there with lures who failed. He said you can catch them on lures but it's going to be a tough exercise and for me that was like waving a red flag at a bull and I thought I can do this I just got to work out a pattern. When he told me they fed predominantly on crustaceans I immediately started thinking of a small, very lifelike and soft crustacean imitation. When Tom starts telling you stuff on the water, you shut up and you listen, because you know that what you're getting is decades of fishing intelligence packed into a succinct little lesson. Doesn't matter whether you fish with your baits or your lures. Okay, when fishing for brim, you can use, I, I prefer live clickers, but I haven't got any today, I've got fresh green prawns. That's my next preferred bait, or small crabs. So you can put it on hole. I just put it through the tail, and just thread it up. Right up the hook, as so. Or you can peel them, and just use the meat. And sometimes that works just as good. Yeah, well, I'm about to cast out a prawn. This one hadn't been shelled because there's a few pickers about and they're getting the peel prawn off too, too quickly, so. Just a little short cast into the deep water is all you need. Let it sink. And what I normally do is pull out a bit of line like that. It's pretty muddy here, just a little dab of mud on the line. When that brim picks the line up and he swims off with it, that line will pull out from under that mud and tighten up so you can pick it right up and strike. Whenever you start fishing a new waterway, new fish, a new lure, you always have that sense of doubt. You, you don't have the confidence yet that what you're doing is the right thing. So I started with a pretty stock standard retrieve, but I knew that the local fish would have to be interested in that small little soft plastic. It was with some surprise that just three casts into it, Tom was still doing his first introduction piece to camera on how he was going about his bait fishing when I got that solid, unmistakable clunk through the rod of a solid brim sucking in that lure and there's no better feeling. There we go, Tom. He told me there were big ones in here. Judging by the flash of this thing, he's a cracker. The bite brings so much feeling with it. <laughs> you can just put the hands up and go, got ya. I'm doing something right here. Challenge accepted. Now, it's game on. Whew. That was literally second or third cast. Spot X. <laughs> Tell me Tom's brim spot X. I've heard the brim here are massive, really big ones, some of the biggest ones Tom's come across and the man who's fished a whole lot, that counts for something. He's also told me they're incredibly cautious. He often chases them with bait. If you want to get them on a lure, you, you've got to have your game face on, you'll be doing everything right and that's why I've come with extremely finesse gear. He also told me a sneaky little bit which I tucked away in the back of the brain and that was they love feeding on crustaceans in this waterway little clickers, saltwater yabbies, and also prawns and the like. So the lure choice I've gone for is the little two inch Zeric shrimp. You won't find a more lifelike 
for an invitation on the market than that, and I reckon this brim's thought exactly the same thing. You said there were some big ones here, mate. <laughs> you, just, you just shot me down, you said this isn't a really big one here for you, <laughs> which makes me a little, bit, a little bit nervous about what else we might come across, but being third or fourth cast. I'm trying to keep my eye on my rods in case they disappear. <laughs> That's beautiful, beautiful yeah, fish, mate. I'll give you that for a second. Look at that. Big southern. They look real, those things, don't they? Black brim. There you go, mate. That was my uh, sneaky little trick that I bought with me today. You said you, you obviously fish a lot with bait around here. You have got them on lures. I bought the really small ones because I thought this will this will fool some of these bigger fish. And there you go, Tumby's secret brim spot X coming through the good so far. That's a lovely fish for early on in the session. A promise of hopefully bigger and better things to come. I'll let this guy go back to join his mates. Tumby Tom's a legend in fishing circles around Australia, particularly down in the south. I love the chance to catch up with guys like that and to fish with them. You just get to learn so much in a short space of time and you also get taken on a bit of a history lesson of fishing. Tom's had the chance to fish with so many fishing greats. I, I love walking around the back room in his house and checking out the old fishing photos, his, his wall of fame as he calls it. And you see photos there of Paul Kelly, Tony Plugger Lockett, there's the worst Lings and Rex Hunts and ETs. He's got to fish with so many of those guys and the stories he tells will keep you amused for hours and hours. The chance to then go fishing with them, just an added bonus. Well, I just threw out and he's grabbed it straight away. Another green prawn, just different, different hole and, and the fish are in this hole, or at least one is. There's lots of bait in this thing, there's lots of small fish, shrimps, and they feed on little mud crabs, there's thousands of them in here, in the system. Now I like using pretty light gear, I haven't always used braid, but uh, you feel the bites a little bit better with braid. Mono, I think they see it less. That's a reasonably good fish. You'd be pleased to catch that in most places, wouldn't you? He's got a bit of weight on him there, Tom. You've got yes. him well trained around here, mate. He's it's getting better. Scoffed that boat of yours. Like you said, that option of just moving around until you find concentrations of fish. Now, Nigel, see how this fish has swallowed that bait right down. People try and get the hooks out and they, and they hurt the fish and kill it. So, you know, there's arguments for and against leaving the hook in there, but it's better than, than busting it trying to get it out. So, yeah, I'd right. rather sacrifice a hook. Well, Tom, I think you know, fisheries research around the place has shown that fish that are just snipped off and left to get rid of a hook in their own time are 90% more likely to survive. So, and they are, these are, these are old fish, they take a while yeah, to get that old. They do. That being said, we've done our best for them, we're going to put them back and let them grow bigger and smarter. The fishing small waterways, a species like brim, with soft lures, soft sinking lures, there's a few tips which will help you catch a fair few more. First one is all to do with casting, it's about casting as accurately as quietly as possible. At the moment I can see the ledges and the channels where the brim are most likely to hold. So what I want to do is cast to the edges of those really quietly. As that lure gets close to the water, I'm feathering the spool so that little shrimp just slides into the water. And it's all about line management and watching your line. Very, very carefully watch that line. The moment it slackens, it means it's on the bottom. Now what I'm doing today is I'm not working it straight away. I'm virtually letting it sit there for a little while before working it. So I want it to sit in the bottom like a prawn that's tried to escape something, trying to evade detection, and then it'll have a little hop and a little shuffle off the bottom. And that doesn't mean a big jig. All I'm doing is just touching the line to wriggle it, keeping it tight, and then letting that shrimp go back to bottom. And I'm, and I'm just repeating that all the way back to my feet, keeping my line tight throughout the retrieve. The moment I feel a, a slight tap, or sometimes you'll even see the line do something different, often means a fish has picked it up and you've got to quickly go because the brim are so good at spitting a lure the moment they think something's not right. So cast accurately, line management, try to make your lure look like the real thing. Oh yes, there we go. What an awesome bite that is. <laughs> Particularly on light gear. Going with a real finesse approach today. And the real light stuff, three pound braid, four pound leader, as lightly weighted a, a lure as I can get away with. It's one of the, the weedlessly pre-rigged Xeric shrimps which come out of the packet, very lightly weighted, and also really good at working their way through snags. You can obviously see it's pretty weedy here, 
It's a great little lure to be working through this weed. Also looks like the thing that these guys are going to be feeding on most of the day. This one's certainly taking a liking to it. Aren't they solid fish? Tumby said they were chunky in these parts. He still reckons this is about an average size fish for here. It's my kind of average. They're certainly chunky. They do love a well presented bait, but it's good to see the lures are, are kicking along. Certainly when he said they're on crustaceans like crabs and prawns and shrimp. I knew this little baby was gonna take their fancy. How natural a bait does that look? A little Zeric shrimp and gently hopped. Key to catching larger brim, the cautious ones, is often to go for nests. So the light leaders just to make the lure look natural in the water. As lightly weighted a lure as you can get away with just to make it look like the real thing. And then just stay in contact with it, working through likely looking spots. Things like this will come along and crash tackle it in no time. Got a bit more weight to him, this fish. Landing brim on light gear can be difficult, especially when you leave your net behind. Now this is a really nice fish by the look of it. So what you try and do is walk it in onto a bank somewhere where you can get at it. Up here is a bit of a, more of a shallow bank, so I'll try and lead him up there. Right though, I'll try and lead him in on here, to where Nigel is. Fat fish, Tom. He's a good fish, he'd be way over a kilo, that one. That's a solid, solid fish. It's a really fat spawning brim, and if I see people taking them, I feel like pushing them in the water. Because they take a long time to get to that age, and it's pity to kill them, that's for sure. I'm gonna let that one go, so you can have the honours. Awesome seeing those big brim come out. Even better seeing them go away to spawn, make a lot more little brims. In the Zeric range you'll find some awesome crustacean imitations in the way of the shrimp, the cherubin and the like. They come in a range of sizes, some fantastic natural colours. They've got a very lifelike action in terms of a really motile wiggly tail, lifelike luminescent eyes and those little wiggly legs that get fish all over the planet going. What you'll find in the two inch option, they come with a couple of rigging options, they come with that really light weighted weedless option which is fantastic for those very subtle presentations putting it amongst the snags and the weed beds. They also come with a heavier jig head that is very well designed to put it on the bottom and have it sitting tail up just like a prawn trying to evade detection. A very very versatile lure to have in the box. If you're into your brim fishing or pretty much anything else that matter that loves eating a prawn, you've got to have some of these on board. Have a look at that. There's one of our dominant brim species in the southern parts of our country. I've got to thank our mate, Tumby Tom, for bringing me to one of his haunts to play with these awesome creatures. What a great little way to spend an afternoon, a good mix of bait and lure techniques. Certainly learned a few things off Tumby, things that I can put into practice when I hit my home waters again. In the meantime, I'll let this guy go. Uh, the final wrap at the end of the day as to what might have come out on top. I think it was a bit of a stalemate. Over a few cold ones, we debated it in lively terms, as bait and lure anglers often tend to do. And I think it was a win for both. We, we, we looked at good bait presentation techniques and that produced fish, and then we looked at a good solid lure technique with a great little imitation bait, and it produced fish as well. I think what it really taught us at the end of the day is that if you go about bait fishing well and lure fishing well against the same fish, you stand to have the same results. And, and, and that's a real key lesson, is that some days, if you stick to good principles of fishing, it doesn't matter what you're using, you're gonna catch your fish. 
And to keep up to date with everything the Fishing Show crew is up to, including our latest competitions and prize giveaways, head over to our Facebook page, AFN The Fishing Show. And if you're keen for content, AFN TV is now free to join with over a thousand videos at your fingertips, plus tip and tactics from Bill and myself.